Okay, so let's get back to this project. This is a Husqvarna 26 inch forest axe. I'm a little over caffeinated, so deal with it. Now, this project has been already over three videos long. I do repeat myself quite a bit, and I'm gonna repeat myself again to set the context for this project, although I do recommend that you stop this and go back and watch the other ones first. The real reason I bought this axe is because it provides a lot of talking points as I go through and modify this and make it into something that I would consider a much better axe and largely also that I just see a lot of videos where people are getting stock axes and they're just using them the way they are like I, I never do that now one thing I do really want to emphasize is that my complaint is not that no one should have to do any work to their axe head or their handle my complaint is that with minor changes, this company could create a lot fewer problems for users you know, by making this head to handle fit better because it's a very poor fit. Now the reason for that really is that this is exaggeratedly thick because the whole handle is exaggeratedly thick and that's not necessary without you know any extra money any extra expense just a little bit of redesign where this would fit and mate better i took the head off i wouldn't have had to i could have worked with it and got it further on got it pretty tight and fixed it up but i wanted to take it off and modify these ears there's large gaps that you can stick things down in when i took this off there's very little contact between the head and the handle all these are serious problems and they require a whole bunch of work. If I have to do all that, just give me the handle and the head separate. This swells too fast and too much onto the shoulder. These ears hit the shoulder, they stop, and then the ax is only touching like here and here at the bottom and the rest is loose and it wobbles back and forth. No good. The handle is also way too small. Like if I look in here now, If I scoot it all the way, the handle all the way towards the front of the eye, there's a big gap here. Honestly, it's approaching an eighth of an inch. It's huge. Once I get the handle fit well, I'm probably going to wedge it and then treat the handle, get it scraped down at least close to where I want it. Okay, we're going to use real simple tools here, no power tools. We're going to use the four-way uh, shoemaker's rasp or shoe rasp or four-way rasp or whatever you want to call it. I have a file in case I need to do any metal work. I have a simple saw, the Silky F180. I prefer the actually the red one for general use, not the orange one. Uh, hatchet, I may not use that, I might just use this, we'll see. And I have a knife for scraping and whittling and carving and stuff like that. And we just don't need that many tools and I don't want to use a bunch of tools because uh, not everyone has access to a bunch of tools. Okay, so first thing I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to reset up the camera and we're going to start uh, fitting this thing up. Okay, we're just snapping a few pictures here. A few of the important things we need to do with this is we need to get this seated further down so that it touches everywhere along this edge or at least, you know, pretty much. And that's going to require taking a little bit more of the shoulder off. Also on the top, there's way too much room from front to back. The front to back fit is really important because if you think about it, this is how you hit the ax over and over and then you pull it out of cuts and stuff like that and that's just going to rock back and forth in there. For that, I think I'm going to put a wedge in here, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. And the question is, how deep does the gap go? And I can see light all the way from this corner to this corner. Since this forms a ramp here, like that, we need to get this further on so it snugs up at the base. And we're going to take care of the rest of that gap later. But first, that's the first priority. Okay, I want to remove this head again so I can see where it's contacting and what's going on in there. I'll be back with the drift. As you can see, there's darkness here, right there, a little bit here, but not very much surface contact inside the eye. <laughs> Back here, it's touching on one side and not the other. So if I pare down the side it's touching on, it'll it hopefully allow it to go in a little bit deeper. Now, if I made this handle from scratch or had a handle that was way too big in the eye and I was slowly, you know, fitting it down here, I could make this fit a whole lot better. I'm just going to scratch a couple lines so I can tell what's going on as I drive this home. And it's really not budging. Now 
the front of the handle is actually starting to touch a little bit, so I'm just going to take a little bit off there because I'm going to do that anyway. I need to flatten and smooth this off. We gained uh, over a sixteenth of an inch there. Yeah, I could maybe see just a little bit of light through there. It's looking much, much better. Let's grab one more line. Okay, that's it. It's not going on any further. I'm going to take it off one more time, reassess where it's touching so I know what I have to do to get the thing to go on further. It's just the easiest way to do it. I think this will be the last time. There's a lot of contact here, but not anywhere else. Except here on the front of the eye, which I like, but I want this to go down further. Yes, we gained more, um, quite a bit more, about a sixteenth of an inch. And we have a pretty good fit along the bottom. Pretty tight now. Okay, I got derailed on this project for a couple days, but we're back on it. Uh, next step is to carve a curved wedge to fit in here. It's going to be curved on the inside, curved on the outside, tailor-made to fit this spot, and tapered to gradually fit in here and shove this wood forward into the front of the eye and fill that space and ensure a very tight front-to-back fit. Now by the time we do that and drive this wood all the way to the front of the eye really hard, we're going to have a full eighth of an inch filled back here. So that's how bad this handle fit was. Now the only options really are to either do it from the front or the back. Beyond that, yeah, we have to do this because there's no wedging in the center of the wood right here, like cross wedging, that's going to spread the wood that much. And it's so loose in here that it's probably just going to cause a huge split to travel down pretty far. Now personally, I'm not opposed to cross wedging. I've used it uh, always. I don't use it unless I need it, but I use it if I need it. And that's because you need some way to ensure front to back fit. And that means, you know, spreading the wood in this direction or filling one of these back or front spaces, depending on the situation. I think that can be a better option. In this case, I think it's the only option. So I have a piece of tan oak from the firewood pile. I'm gonna split my wedges out of and uh, let's get going. Carving the inside here, I think it's just faster to do it with a hatchet than to try to scoop this out with a straight knife. Maybe if I had a crooked knife out here or a gouge, but honestly I would probably still rough it out like this first because look how fast I can just get rid of a bunch of wood. I think we're gonna do okay with that. I would like this to be a little more hollow, but it's either gonna conform as it goes in or it's gonna crack. So I'm gonna start a fire because I just feel like if this is hot, it's, it's gonna perform better and it's less likely to break into numerous pieces, which I don't want. I also want the top of this. Let's get this thing out of the way. More leveled and more beveled. So if I start whacking on this, especially if I use it steel at all, which I may or may not, probably not, but I might, it's gonna start splintering right away unless I bevel the, all the edges and corners off. All of them off. Okay, all I want here is uh, to heat this gently, slowly, I'm gonna put it kinda out to the edge here. Top's 
stuff. As far as soft versus hard, I've really much used hard wedges mostly, and last time I tried to use a soft wedge, it didn't go well to fall apart and splinter. And better for me probably to just stick with what I know, which is hardwood wedges. I'm gonna make this sharp, but relatively obtuse. Okay, this wood is uh, warm, not hot. This wedge could have been carved to fit a lot better. There we go. Okay, we went in there pretty far. There's a pretty big gap right here, so I'm actually gonna carve something and drive it in there too, just like a pin of uh, wood. But yeah, I should have carved this more carefully. It'll work out, I think. Okay, certainly not as deep as I wanted it to go. Believe it or not, I'm gonna straighten that out and whack it a few more times. Anything I can do to get it any further in there. And that will have to do for now. That wedge did, definitely didn't go all the way to the bottom of the split, which is unfortunate, but it's definitely tight. And we have a pretty good fit along the bottom. Pretty tight now. I kind of wish I had glued this back wedge in. It didn't occur to me at the time. Also, I wish this it would have gone further. I know it didn't reach the bottom. You know, using a hardwood wedge, like I said, this neither one of these is budging that much, so it's really hard to tell, for me anyway, how thick to make the wedge. I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are a lot better at that than me because they do it all the time. But for me, it's just something I do occasionally, so it often goes kind of like this. You know, I just have to go with my best instinct. All that said, I think it'll work out fine. And I'm not going to do anything else. I won't put in any cross wedges. I won't put the round wedge back any of that unless I need it when. So we're in a big redwood park here and uh, it's actually preserved. So really this place hasn't been logged, but for some reason this tree has a big ax cut in it. Like someone was starting the felling cut. It kind of looks like they just took the bark off and then left it, but it's, it definitely looks like a felling cut which is crazy. And you have no idea, of course, how big this tree is. It looks like eight feet across at the base, probably. Insanely huge. Interesting mystery.